Salutations, everyone. Derek, we are here for the 2024 Valhall Open Swedish Disc Golf Pro Tour stop number one. We are here for the final nine holes, this FPO coverage here at Valhall Park. Very, very exciting stuff. My name is Chris German. We have Derek Skoll bringing you the action here. That front nine had a lot of birdies, a lot of bogeys. I think this back nine is going to be just as exciting. Yeah, big old shout out to all of our partners that are a part of the Swedish Disc Golf Pro Tour, making everything that you're seeing possible. Each year is getting better and better. Shout out to the crew for running such an amazing event time after time. As we take a look right now, Sophie with the lead, sitting at six over for the tournament. Josephine only a couple strokes behind her. Amanda's hanging out there as well. Julia, fortunately, gave up some strokes there, so not really in contention, but trying to fight for a podium spot. And as we jump into hole 10, 551 foot, 168 meter, par four, OB strip there in the middle. The FPO are teeing off from a shorter pad there off to the left with a lot of trees close to the pad. Yeah, a lot gets, of OB as well. Yeah, turns uh, over just road, a bit. So that's going to find OB. Road OB, OB to the left, OB to the right. And as you can tell, the wind... The wind is really picking up, so you can see a lot of affected flight there. Good shot there from Sophie, as long as she is around that tree. Yeah, Derek, this was, I don't know, I mean, we were in Sweden, and it was in April, but it was so cold this day and for some reason this back nine it got even colder i think because that wind showed up mm -hmm. this is one of the colder rounds i filmed in a while i just don't know if i was prepared for it but yeah i mean we didn't really get much warmer than like 45 degrees fahrenheit pretty much the whole trip and we even saw a little bit of snow while we were there yeah wild stuff as julia or josephine still has some work to get up and down she's kind of hanging out on that left side Oh, yeah. Fall right through. Good shot there from Amanda. Yeah, and it looks like Sophie is in a great spot for a nice little turnover shot. Just a little short. This is a tough birdie to get for these ladies. Mm. Even that leaves a little meat on the bone there. A little, yeah, a little sharp angle and low. Kind of just digs right into the ground. Oh. Oh, no. Wow. Good tree. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. She hits the tree. This is what I was talking about with Josephine. It gets very confusing because she has the, the black jacket as well. <laughs> so that she looks like I uh, I don't know what it is. I mean, here at Gatekeeper, we love it because we wear all black. But I find that a lot of... The Swedish players and European players wear all black. So, like, while I'm doing the coverage or the editing, sometimes it's hard to actually tell the difference between the players because they just wear all black. It's usually a hat or something to tell the difference. Although I do like the style. Oh, look at you, dude. You're all black right there. If you know Gatekeeper, we are all black and then purple on game day. But it was too cold to pop out the purple here. I'm, oh man. Hitting right side low, doesn't manage to catch. Oh no. Just gotta shake it off. I think I had my purple on underneath the hoodie. <laughs> yeah. 
mean, after Sophie going to be here, Josephine really needed to keep pace with her and another missed putt. That's really been the downfall of her all round. So we're going to move into hole 11, par four for the ladies, I believe. This is a 381 foot, 116 meter shot. This is a tough one. There is a lot of trees to catch. It is a very unique angle. Try with, a man, with a Mando. And with I don't Mando. believe that made it. Really clean turnover shot there. Pushing just a little forward. That should be a pretty clean approach. Yes, the ladies are playing from the same spot as the men. This was a par three for the guys and one of the hardest holes on the course. But just adding an extra par for these ladies does not make the hole any easier. A lot of trees to, to find here. So this looks great from Josephine and mm. it's a good tree. Should be fine from there. Oh, it looks like it, it stayed before yeah, she, the Mando there. It. That's good, sweet. Still a lot of work, though. I mean, now throwing four. Hmm. Not to mention this is on a raised basket, so. Even that, that's that's tough. You're about 10 meters or so, but with the raised basket and everything, that is a tricky putt. Yeah, with the wind whipping around, it's going to really require a lot of focus. Get down. Yeah, all these putts should be makeable, but like you said, need a lot of focus. This, this is not where you want to be. This is a tough lie. Mm. Can't even work her way all the way down the fairway there. Good putt there from Amanda to just keep it at a bogey. Hmm. Tough to see there. And Sophie just casually grabbing a birdie here. Separating things just that much more. Also a great bounce back, taking a bogey on 10. Yeah, one of four ladies to grab the birdie here. So this came in as a very tough hole. All around, yeah. With some great separation, couple bogeys, a birdie, and a par. So there's now six strokes between the leader, Josephine. Not a lot of holes left. All right, we got hole 12, par three, 259 foot, 79 meter. Pretty tight gap all the way down with a large mound with the green on top. Again, you want to match the angle of that hillside so that as you hit and slide up, you don't redirect too terribly. The it's tee pad angle for the Yeah, I was going to say the there. the tee pad is also pushed back and raised um, off of the hillside to give a little bit more distance.
Yeah, I got to say, these T-pads were miraculous. They were so good. And they're all built from the students here. So this complex, I should say, this park, uh, has a lot of different schools, a bunch of trade schools as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them is a woodworking uh, section or school, I should say. So there's a lot of students that Henrik actually has helped build these tee pads and they are high quality. Yeah. And I mean, pads I ever been on. We've seen a lot of tee pads over the years. Great stop there from the metal pipe. They're keeping her close. <laughs> Good pipe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of tee pads across the world world now actually and i'd say these are probably some of the best i've ever seen yeah the turf is nice and tight short feels good it's grippy large enough oh great save nice she's stoked about that one runs it down good par there from julia boy visibly yeah, upset knows. about that one yeah yeah she knows that that is single-handedly uh killed her around here it's just four or five missed putts inside the circle not a hole you want to take a bogey on one of the easier holes Actually, I take that back. There were zero birdies on this hole. So a lot of pars, but the ladies were grabbing the birdies. Jonathan! Jonathan! Whoa! <laughs> Hi. Yeah, yeah, check this pad out. I think you should use your wrist a little bit more. Why not? Is he okay? I usually it's fine. All right, hole 13, another par three, 81 meters. We have OV Road there on the left-hand side. This is a touchy little technical shot as well. You just want to throw mid-range or putter on just a slight hyzer and miss these trees. You could turn one over and end up not in a great spot. There's a lot of little trees over there on that right side. Oof. But easy to overcompensate with the OB so quick on the left. Uh, there is a left side gap as well that the lefty or a forehand player will throw. As this uh, gets caught up. So we're going to see that left gap. You can skip it off the road. Kind of cuts the hole a little shorter. But goes over OV for almost the entire flight. Oh, what a solid shot. A little bit too much oh. pepper on there from Amanda. <laughs> that almost went in. <laughs> what a shot. I thought that was sailing... 10 meters past the basket. Yeah, and Julia gave herself some hope there. Um, plenty of a line to work with there. Honest bid there from Sophie. This is... Nice. For the birdie. Good bounce back there for Josephine. Josephine was the only birdie on the day on this hole. Wow. Field wasn't too large. I think there was maybe 16 to 20 ladies here. Uh, four about 14 four ladies. Four cards worth. Yeah, so. Taking a whole stroke on the field, though. Which four cards for FPO and... 
a developing scene, I think, is really good. Um, hole 14, 512 foot, par 4, 156 meters. You got Mando very close on the left there as you leave the tee pad. OB all along the right side. Slightly uphill as well once you make this bend. You're going to see a lot of like higher shots off the tee. Just like that. <laughs> it's caught up. OB on that right side comes up very quickly. Yeah, so you almost you want it to be high so that it stalls out and pushes left. <laughs> Always really? a possibility of missing the Mando as well. Yeah, tough angle. <laughs> and that's right. That's not too far off of where the drop zone would be if you do miss the Mando. Yeah, we saw in the MPO coverage, Anders, uh, I think he missed the Mando here, went to that drop zone, and then oh. proceeded to throw a crazy shot as Julia is going to join him where that drop zone was. But very fair drop zone in the sense that it's, it's right there. If you pipe a shot. Yeah, solid. Julia's going to try to get up and down for her bogey. Skip on up. Oh, yeah. Great flex shot. Just missed the outhouse. Uh, right in front of it. Miss it. Whoa. Yeah, the outhouse was to the left of me, so she <laughs> piped right past the outhouse. I was like, oh, I can't even turn anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> she's about five meters. Probably right far, far enough to have plenty of a look there. Yeah. Looks great. Oh, yeah. I thought it was going to pin it for a minute. Hansen leaving a little bit there. Not an easy putt. Tap in there for Sophie. Easy par. Good par there. Josephine played this hole very well. And it does the same. So lead card playing this hole very well. Bunch of pars. Julia, unfortunately, missing that. Mando. All right, hole 15. This one's a par three for the ladies. Coming at 114 meters, slightly downhill here. Basic's gonna be pitched over here on the left side. Full rip for these ladies. All right, full rip indeed. Josephine's gonna put herself about the edge of circle, maybe 12 meters or so. And 
But Sophie just takes the hyzer line the whole way. It does Those look like if at. you want to get a little cheeky, there is like a forehand line there on the left. Julie getting caught up early. But yeah, good recovery. recovery. Ooh, great line. Yeah, a little farther than I thought. Definitely closer to 20 meters. As this is a little closer to that 12 to 15 I was talking about. And no birdies there from the card. Good honest bids, though, and should see ourselves a par frame here, Derek. With Sophie now, six-stroke lead coming into just the last three holes. This is now a battle for second, I would say. Josephine and Amanda, just three strokes separating them. Back at it to hole 16, another par four, 535 foot, 163 meter. It's gonna be a swinging right to left, a lot of trees to navigate. And then it swings back to the right. OB long. Really tree there from Johansson. It's like you were saying, uh, or as we were saying earlier on, uh, this was a very dense forest. So a lot of work went into making this course playable, really. So again, shout out to Henrik and just the team here at Valhalla Park for Hi. giving us a bunch of different courses. So this is a the bronze layout. And same with the pro layout, it is a mix of three different courses. I believe it's two courses. They're working on the fourth overall now. Um, but these are a Martin Spleed design in association with Latitude. Oh, yeah, because the third is a pitch and putt. Yep, and they're building their fourth now. Which, hopefully, it's ready by the time we're there again to the start of next season. I'm sure it will be. Again, only a year and some change that this course has even been in the ground. I think some of the, some of the folks in the States need to take... Uh, a few plays from this book. <laughs> hmm. Tough roll just outside the circle.
She's coming right for you. Yeah. Good shot there from Julia. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what a birdie from Amanda. Well-deserved rewind. Eyes are the whole way. Dead center, right on the pole. Makes it a little more interesting. And Sophie, sponsored with Team RPM Disc. We actually haven't mentioned that, but that's really cool to see the New Zealand company getting some reputation representation over here in uh, Europe. Yeah, I mean, in fact, we will be seeing the RPM Open coming up for tour stop number three. Oh, no. Just a little offline there for Julia. I will say that there is a lot of commitment with Julia's putting style. Um, the race for second just got a lot closer. Yeah, tied up as we're gonna move into hole 17, 195 meters, par four. Probably the most open shot we've seen all day. Uh, OB on the left and the right, and then just a slight little dog leg. Basket's going to be tucked over here on this second shot. Still some danger, though, like I said, with OB on the right. Could be easy to turn one over. There's also a possibility of finding the OB on the left, but that's going to be a little harder to do. I would say you definitely want to be more, like, it adds a little more distance, but just being out to the left. We'll just open up that gap a little more on the second shot. So you're not as pinched off as this is going to be uh, a... Pretty pinched off. Yeah. If that rides that line and then gets stable here, checks up. It's a good shot. Yeah, that should be a nice forehand approach. Hey, safe is good. Just take your par at this point. So Julia electing for the backhand shot. Let's see if she can cut off the corner there. She, yeah, does, she does beautifully. Just testing that little OB strip there. Slides right over it. It's got a long look for birdie. So I'd say this is probably a little more common if the ladies end up there on the right side. You just kind of throw a straight shot, get about pin high. Good approach there from Johansson. Even closer approach there from Sophie. Uh -huh. 
Man, I cannot replicate what she did on the last hole, but it's fine. Just take it apart here. Josephine in there for her par. So we should just see a couple cleanups here. To go back to how awesome this property is, you can see these buildings in the back. That's actually a hotel on site. So we were able to stay at the hotel. Uh, really cool experience to basically look out your window and there's disc golf baskets there at the hotel. So Yeah, and I think like it adds to the whole appeal to the event because you get to hang out with all the players and everyone involved in the event. Everyone's super close knit here. And as we go into the final hole of the event, 420 foot, 128 meter par three. Lots of trees here to beat. Road is safe. That path there is safe. We also have a built up green to keep things interesting. Yeah, Slope in the front platform. side. I guess that was good. It's hard to I, say. I think I think so. I think it would have been a little too far right. And seeing this left line here, if that checks up, weaving through these trees. That was a great shot. Oh, hook up. All right. Yeah, there you shot go. There from Julia. Right outside Got circle. Long look for par. Not too, too much danger on this. Oh, one. wow. It would be. Beautiful approach. Josephine has a tap in par. Let's see if Amanda can match that. And oh, our wow. leader, <laughs> our winner, legend here in Sweden, Sophie. Is able to walk this one in. But for that second place spot, Amanda leaving just a little too much. She's going to have a long look to save her par. Oof. Going at it a little high. Derek, I want to see a roller go in the basket off this awesome <laughs> ramp here. <laughs> I, I, I'd say it's possible. Given, give it enough time. We're going to see it. Uh, Amanda not able to get that putt and then... Barring anything crazy, Josephine can walk into second place. Solid bogey save for Julia. Yeah, a couple tough holes there in the middle, but she executed a lot of great birdies as well. Good to see out here competing at such a young age. On lead card, first tour stop of the year. Amanda put up a good bid, but not enough. Still a podium finish. Josephine worked hard for that second place position, but the lady of the weekend. And Sophie actually won the first two events of the previous season as well. What a sick trophy also made on site here by the woodworking crew in true Scandinavian fashion. Yeah, that thing is sick. <laughs> Some Carlsberg, big sponsor for the course. Couple other little goodies here. 
avsluta på plus 15 för helgen Amanda Lennartsson. Oh, I didn't even see this lady play all day. I think I saw her on hold too. <laughs> but no, Amanda, great showing from her. Very competitive, great skill. Camaraderie from the ladies, all close. Does she get to keep that, or does that stay at the property? I think they keep them. Oh, that's so epic. Well-deserved win there, Sophie. Shout out to Rasmus as well, uh, the tournament director for the event. There we have it. Yeah, it's going to finish it up. Sophie with the seven over for the tournament, one under for the round. Great showing from her. Just fiend, 14 over, five over for the round. Take a look at the rest of the scores there. Julia able to come in fifth, so still a respectable finish from her. That's it, Derek. I want to say thank you to the sponsors again. You want to close us out. Well, as always, we really appreciate everyone tuning in. We love bringing you the European coverage, and we are so honored to be a part of the Swedish Disc Golf Pro Tour. This is our second year involved, and we got two more to go after this. So if you like what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe. And if you'd consider supporting us even further and seeing your name on the ticker there as one of the Patreon supporters, all of that goes a long way as well. So thank you very much, everyone, and we'll see you on the next one.